camp for the night. And I thought, well, we're sitting in the sun here warming up, I give a little update. The trailer itself, you wouldn't even be able to tell it rolled. Compared to all the other stuff we've done to it, I mean, it's it's got some pretty <coughs> major scratches and, and stuff from um, trees when we've gone down really narrow trails over the last few years. I mean, from here, you probably can't even really tell. I don't think anybody would be able to tell. Definitely that the trailer itself was damaged because it really isn't. So this is the only damage. There is um, just a few scratches here. There's a couple nicks right up here where there was some rocks sticking in there. Scratches, scratches, and a scratch on the water heater door. That's it. That's the only, only uh, signs of any sort of damage on the trailer itself. When I get back to the shop, I'll probably do a little bit deeper inspection, but yeah, I think the trailer itself is um, yeah, as good as new, basically, or as good as a couple years old. When it was upside down, I checked the I checked the hubs and uh, and the bearings and made sure everything was legit there. That was all totally fine. The way that it flopped, it actually landed on a Palo Verde that was basically right here, and it was. Um, it cushioned it actually quite well and when we rolled it over um, with the winch it was again like slow motion and uh, there wasn't a lot of stress on any particular part I know when Jason flopped his trailer it looked like he had a lot more speed and momentum and and his trailer actually slid I believe and uh, hit a wheel and then rolled or dropped where mine was it was pretty much static there wasn't a lot of energy in the flop. We were actually surprised when we opened the galley up, like everything was basically still in its spot, which is probably a, a testament to my wife's packing abilities. A few months back, she pulled apart everything in the galley and reorganized everything in there, and uh, everything stayed in, in, in its place totally fine. Come on back up. Okay, I'm just gonna finish talking and then we'll head back down. What do you think? You wanna go that way? We can go look over there. There's something over there. I wonder what that is. I'm going to go over there and then We should there. hike and see what that is. The awning bracket itself is where most of the damage is. So when it fell, when it was uh, resting on that tree, it looked like almost all of the weight was right here on this corner. And I think this is where it landed. So all of the energy went right into this corner. This is one by aluminum square tubing. And I'm clearly going to have to replace that. This is this is the the piece that lets us raise and lower the awning. So that needs to be replaced. This steel bar that connects the um, the awning itself to this riser is kind of like an S shape now. And then if I raise this up, there is damage to the back of the the awning itself. That's punched in. It looks like maybe four or five millimeters. Not not too worried about that it doesn't look like it's punched through um, but there is quite a bit of tweak like a, a tweak right here on the actual aluminum backing of the awning it doesn't look that severe so my hope is that the awning itself is still fully functional and i expect that's the case i'm not going to open it up until we're at the shop just because i don't we don't need to use the awning today and then on the rear of the awning the bracket is also bent here. So the one by riser is totally fine, but this awning bracket itself, like the one up front, has you know a bit of a, a wiggle to it now. The aluminum backing of the awning itself appears totally fine on this end. And then the last bit of damage is right here on the rooftop tent. There's about a golf ball size puncture that Thankfully, it doesn't go all the way through, so I'll just patch over that. And then there's a little hole right here that looks like a pencil poked in it. It's about that big. So I'll patch that up, patch that, and then the tent itself is is totally fine. No, nothing else happens to it. Here's some of my um, final thoughts. So just sort of like mini postmortem here. If you ever find yourself in a situation like this, you know, just a situation where you're you know, something bad happens and you're in the middle of nowhere 
the most important thing is to just chill out, remain calm. I used to do a lot of surfing. I would always try, when, I, when I'm getting thrashed around underwater, it was the most important thing to just remain calm, let the water do what it will. Um, there's no fighting all that energy. And, uh, and then you save your air, you save your energy, and so you can actually think through how to get out. Anybody who's been in the overlanding community for a while, there's always, you know, somebody will always say, when you need to do a recovery, the very first step is to, is to just make a cup of tea. <laughs> and that's essentially what we did. Stop what you're doing, take a step back, and just get yourself calmed down first to make sure everybody's you know able to make good safe decisions there's a whole bunch of deer now <laughs> My wife is the real MVP of the day. She uh, she has OCD and really severe anxiety issues, and she was totally chill. I mean, maybe not totally chill, but she was very relaxed and <laughs> calm the whole time, which was amazing. And uh, she was able to to keep the kids entertained. They kept wanting to go over and climb all over the the trailer, which you know clearly would not have been a great idea. We got back to camp with a little bit of light left. And then Beth cooked like an amazing uh, Thanksgiving spread. So we had turkey breast, mashed potatoes, stuffing, canned cranberry jelly. And then for dessert, we had a pumpkin pie with whipped cream and it was delicious. Did you like dinner last night? It was good, huh? <laughs> All right, Finney's asking to go back down to camp. So I think I'm gonna I'm going to turn this off and start hiking back down.